everybody. Thank you for joining Pro Surf Blog today for a mini episode of Epic Surf News. Uh, today, what I'm going to talk about is scanning your surfboard. So I have a board that I really love. Uh, the board just works in everything for me, uh, everything from really good waves to really bad waves. It just is kind of that board I, I tend to go to. So uh, I'm going to take you out back. Okay, so this is that board. Let's check this in on the back. Board right here. Um, so what I got to do to scan it is I got to basically clean up all the wax, uh, take off the fins of course, and then the track pad. You can't really have any track pad when you do the scan, but uh, that's a whole other story we'll get to in a sec. But basically, I got to cut all this off, take all this wax off, and you know, as you guys know, when you're uh, your surfboard, especially your favorite one, you have all these indentions all over the place and there's probably a bunch of little pressure dings all over this thing, but um, once it's stripped clean, uh, then my shaper is going to help it, help me fill that in with, um, well I'm going to learn about what it is, but kind of like a Bondo situation like with the car that has dents. So I'm going to fill it in all smooth and then uh, scan it from there and then hopefully before this thing is any more beat up than it's been, obviously it has dings that I've repaired there and just a variety of places all over the board. So um, yeah, so it get, has to get close enough and then that way one day, you know, forbid that this thing gets destroyed, but if it does, uh, we'll be able to cut out a better one. Um, and then here you can see, um, if you come in, down closer, yeah. So. You can see the outline from the rest of this track pad that's already been eaten away. Um, I put so many days uh, of surfing in on this board that I literally went through the track pad. I haven't gone through many track pads in my time, but this one uh, definitely did. So you can see there, there's still some residue there, so we're going to have to get that off before we do the scan. Um, you know, luckily, because it is such an old, worn out pad situation the, the adhesive is not too strong so I'm sure that's going to come off fairly easy and uh, but I will need to take the rest of this off so you can see look at look at that pretty pretty whack pretty stinky look at this thing maybe even gets this off right now so I figured instead of cleaning it up and putting a new track pad on and getting back out in the water um, this would be the only opportunity where I'd have the track pad off because once you put the track pad on, it's almost impossible to take off and sometimes you actually mess up the resin job when you pull it off if the adhesive is like, you know, super good or uh, on there. But yeah, you can see that I can kind of just get some of that off by hand, but uh, look at that. So there you go, look at that track pad just beat down. Literally the last time I went, the waves were so good. I was having too much fun and pushed off that other side. So that I think was the end of, end of this track pad at that point. So there you go. Before I take this uh, surfboard to my shaper to have this process completed prior to the scan, uh, I think it's important to talk about the placement of the track pad. So what I did is I got a tape measure out and I went ahead and tried to get the best reading I could in terms of the placement of the original track pad. Uh, what a lot of people don't talk about is uh, the magic or the importance of track pad placement. And I think people talk about magic surfboards and duplicates that don't quite work out. And I think people probably don't track uh, the placement of the pad. I mean, because if you get the same board or pretty much the same board cut out and uh, you get ready to use it, but you go ahead and just kind of, you know, eyeball the placement of the track pad, don't have a system down, then I think the chances are is a board is going to react differently, uh, especially if you have a kicker on the back of the track pad, which I really, really like. Um, but it, just in general, uh, your foot placement, where your foot is over the back fins makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna to try to do my best to not only preserve uh, this board outline and shape, but also you know record the placement of the track pad. Um, that way when I get a new track pad and put it on, 
I'm going to try my best to, you know, have that kicker and the pad over the same area. That way I have, you know, sort of two different important elements uh, working together as they did in the first situation uh, or scenario with this board. Um, it would be really innovative for a trackpad manufacturer and or surfboard shapers uh, to come together and figure out how to determine the best placement for a trackpad, um, how to um, maybe have trackpads that are adjustable and movable once they're put on. I know that sounds maybe a little, you know, out of the normal or, or out of what we've seen with the technology, but this makes a big difference, um, whether it's different people riding the same board um, or the same person putting it on, uh, just like you would move the fins around, right? Like, you know, everybody seems to be really comfortable with the idea of moving your fins forward to be looser or back to get more um, stick and hold. Trackpad's the same situation. Uh, wish me luck, I'll give you an update on uh, how that process actually took place.